to this week's Ask Charlie. You can see that I have got my bunting up behind me and we are getting ready for the Queen's Jubilee. Our wonderful, incredible Queen and we have to celebrate her because she is just so phenomenal. So today I thought I would share with you how to make Darren McGrady's, he was the Royal Chef for many years, how to make his famous birthday cake. This cake is requested by all the royals for their birthday. It is a favourite, absolute favourite with the Queen and I want to share with you exactly how to make it. You possibly just saw Lola darting off in that direction. There may be a bit of background dog noise, so just bear with me if there is. I have weighed out a pound of a dark chocolate drops and actually we're just going to use eight ounces to start with so I'm just going to halve this and reserve these for a little bit later. I'll just pour those in. Perfect and then here I have got a saucepan with just a small amount of water and this is called a bain-marie. You don't want the water to be touching the bottom of your bowl because then the chocolate will burn. So I'm just gonna put that on a low heat for all the chocolate to melt. Lola and Florence love playing with each other. It sounds like Lola is torturing Florence at times, but she's not. Florence is very, very vocal. Anyhow, it's so important to read a recipe from start to finish the whole way through before you attempt making it and do it in advance as well because actually this recipe requires me to chill this in the fridge for about six hours so this is why i wanted to share this week with you this recipe and how to do it so it gives you plenty of time to get organized and to do this part in advance Anyway, I am sporting my wonderful apron. I have shown you this before, but these are available now on my website to pre-order, which is really, really exciting. They're gorgeous. They are all handmade and hand embroidered with these beautiful strawberries. And then on this pocket is the Ask Charlie logo. So I'm really thrilled with those. So they are on the website now, but they're pre-order. They are made to order. So um, check that out if you'd like to pre-order one you can there and I will link my website below in the in the description of this video along with the recipe and then of course you've got this video tutorial as well. Lola leave her alone. She, she's gone darting off in that direction and Lola's playing there and Penny is very sensibly sunbathing outside. It's a really beautiful day here in Sussex and I hope that it's really gorgeous um, weather for the actual Queen's Jubilee. This video is going to be part of two because the Queen needs celebrating so I thought that actually we would do for next week some baking and making scones and, and a few other bits and pieces so hopefully my chocolate is beginning to melt and then I need to get the cream out of the fridge. While that's melting, I thought I would tell you a little story. So I was asked in 1997 to ride at um, Windsor for a side saddle display as part of what was called the Royal Pageant. And the Royal Pageant was to celebrate the Queen. Now I actually can't remember what anniversary it was, which is awful, but forgive me, I was only 17. But this, um, this horse and I were chosen and we had so many preparations. The lorry was all packed to go. We were all ready. I had the most beautiful, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't a maroon velvet, but it was a sort of rusty, ready um, coloured velvet costume. And I was riding alongside another girl that was wearing exactly the same costume. And there were, I think, eight of us in total chosen out of the Side Saddle Association to take part in the Royal Pageant. And it was cancelled, which was absolutely heartbreaking. I never got to ride for the Queen at Windsor. Um, it was rained off, Windsor was waterlogged. And I'm not sure that that's ever happened again. We just had sort of freak weather. And it was May, so it's, 
you know same same time of year um but but many years ago but um it always makes me think of that occasion i do have a picture somewhere of me wearing the costume that i think it must be down in devon we did a sort of dress rehearsal and put it on um but the costume is now up in the attic and I've only worn it once. I wore it on my lovely chestnut horse, Pasty, quite a long time ago. So hang on, let's work out. Eight years ago, I wore the costume. So I had a one and only appearance. And it was for um, a side saddle competition at the South of England showground. And my mum was there and Simon brought the children to come and watch and Coco saw me riding in this costume and she saw another little girl, a little girl called Annabelle, I'll never forget it, riding side saddle. And she said, mummy, I want to do it. I want to ride side saddle too. And I said, no, I said no for two years because I really wanted her to want to do it. And I didn't want, um, of course, it's always been my dream that my daughter would ride side saddle, but I didn't want to push it on her. I wanted it to come from her and actually, I don't know whether she would still have been as passionate as she is about riding side saddle if I hadn't made her wait. But actually she couldn't, she was too little. She was four, she was tiny, tiny. And she couldn't join the side saddle association until she was six anyway. So it seemed like, you know, the perfect, perfect thing to kind of stall her and say, well, you can't until you're six. And then um, for her sixth birthday, she started riding side saddle. Anyway, I thought you, you might enjoy that whole story. I can hear that that is just beginning to simmer, so I'm going to give it a good stir. The chocolate is melting beautifully. It's almost there, so I'm just going to heat up one cup of my double cream. So... I've got my cup measurements and one cup in there. And I'm just going to bring this to the boil. I'm not going to overboil it. I'm just going to bring it up just to the boil. And this is the pan here. This is all melted beautifully so I'm just going to take this off the heat that has just come up to the boil and I'm going to just stir it in to my chocolate and this is for the filling this is what we're going to put in the fridge to chill for um, about six hours which is why I say it's so important to read a recipe well in advance so you know exactly what you're doing Ooh, I'm sloshing it out so just thoroughly mix it through together I will show you in a moment but it's just coming into this gorgeous gorgeous rich chocolate filling for our cake and the car has just arrived the dogs are probably all going to go loopy loo in a moment but this I mean just look at that absolutely gorgeous it is important to use a good quality dark chocolate so this is the dark chocolate that I am using I'm not even going to try and pronounce it it's from San Francisco I think it's called Gillard um, but it's just gorgeous so make sure that that's well combined leave it just to cool a little bit on the counter before you put it in the fridge and then pop that in the fridge and leave it until much later in the day or you could even leave it overnight as well my chocolate and cream has been chilling in the fridge for a good few hours and so i'm going to start making the cake I have got an H, an H, an eight inch tin, um, loose bottom. I actually find loose bottom easier and I have got some baking paper. I'm going to draw a circle around my baking paper and cut it out 
to line my tin. Now, if you are using an electric um, oven, you want to use an uh, electric fan oven if, if, if you've got one and set it at 177 degrees Celsius. I'm going to use a baking oven of my Arga and I'm just going to pop my circle into the bottom of there and now I'm going to grease the sides. So using a little bit of kitchen paper and just some softened butter and I'm just going to smear Take that out, let's grease first. Make sure you grease the sides well. Put that back in. And then just set that to one side so it's ready for you. We are using quite a few eggs. Six egg yolks and two whole eggs. So actually I need another bowl. When I'm using lots of um, egg yolks, then the leftover egg white I will make into meringues. Right, it's really, really important that you break your eggs into individual, or do them individually, just in case you have one egg that is bad, you haven't put, you know, you don't want your sixth egg to be a bad one. So I tip them in separately. And that egg yolk can go in there. Then check that this is all right. It smells absolutely fine. I've never come across a bad egg, but it does happen. So it's important just to do them separately. I've got my six yolks in there and I'm just going to pop my two whole eggs in as well. In they go there. So I have got my eggs, my egg yolks, my egg whites, which I will probably put in the fridge and then make them into meringues when I have got time. Four ounces of granulated sugar. And I'm just gonna tip that straight in there and then just whisk them by hand. Now I've got a saucepan here and I'm going to put it on to come up to the boil and I'm actually going to heat this up. That is whisked together. So pop that to one side, wait for that to come to the boil while I get my flour and cocoa powder ready. Two ounces of plain flour. and one ounce of cocoa powder. I'm actually using um, Dutchy organic cocoa powder, which is supporting Prince, the Prince of Wales's charity. So I should just add in one ounce in to there. I've got a sieve and I'm just gonna sieve the cocoa powder and flour together so there are no lumps and it's lovely and smooth. So just sieve that through. Cocoa powder can tend to have some lumps in it and we don't want any lumps in this. So you can just use the back of a spoon just to get it all through. This is quite a fine sieve. And then this, I've just dropped to a slightly lower temperature because it was boiling quite rapidly. I'm gonna put this on, on to heat up and whisk as it's heating. Just heating this through. 
And again, I'm using a Bain Marie. So I haven't got the water touching the bottom of the bowl. I'm just gently heating it through as I whisk for a couple of minutes. So just heated that through for a couple of minutes. And now I am using my handheld whisk, just save me getting my big camera out. And I want to whisk this until it's, um, you know, really got a lot of air in it. So when you have whisked it really well and it's sort of almost doubled in size, you are done. I have melted two ounces of butter, unsalted butter, it's my washing up pile, and I've got my sieved um, cocoa powder and flour and I'm just going to fold these in now. More in there. And then just, I, my butter isn't hot, hot. So just melt it gently. You don't want it to be piping hot when you add it in. And then I'm going to fold the, this all in together. Gently fold it. Talking about folding always makes me think of that episode in Schitt's Creek when, um, Moira's, Moira and, um, oh gosh, I can't even remember their names. It's been so long since I watched Shit's Creek, but um, yeah, if you've watched it, you'll know exactly what I mean. So funny, such a good episode, um, or such a good series. And we just, we loved it. We absolutely loved it. A laugh a minute. It's Dan Levy, I'm trying to think of his name. The children would know but my mind has gone completely blank. You're probably shouting at the screen, whatever his name is, saying, Charlie, it's whatever, but yes. So now we are ready to put it into our prepared tin. And that's why it's really important to prepare your tin in advance and then you've got it ready and you don't have to think, oh, crikey, I haven't lined my tin. Better do that quick. And you've got it ready. A lot of cooking is all in the preparation. So I'm just going to pour it in to here. Okay, right there we are. So that is now going to go into my baking oven for 20 minutes. And if you're using an electric oven for 20 minutes, the recipe is quite particular. It says 177 degrees Celsius. I'm just placing the um, oven tray in the middle of the oven. And sliding my cake in. Alexa, set the timer for 20 minutes. My 20 minute timer has just gone off. cake. Now sometimes using the agar it can take a little bit longer so I'm going to use a skewer in the middle. If it comes out clean I know it is done and it has so I'm going to leave this to cool. If the skewer had come out with a bit of cake mixture and it um, you know looked like it still needed a little bit more cooking then I would have put it back in and put the plain cold sheet over the top just to make sure that the top doesn't burn at all but that is looking excellent so i'm just going to leave it to cool for a little while in the tin before i turn it out onto a wire rack i've left this to cool for a few minutes and i'm just going to turn it out onto my wire rack this is the great thing about having a loose bottom tin is you can just do that and then peel off the baking paper carefully. Like so. I'm going to leave this to cool completely before I do anything else with it. That has cooled 
quite nicely. I am going to melt the rest of the chocolate again in exactly the same way. Now, it says to slice this into three. And I'm feeling a little bit apprehensive that that isn't quite thick enough to slice into three and actually be better in half. So I think I'm going to trust my gut and go with the half um, because I think listening to your gut is always a good thing and I'm just not sure that I can slice that into three. It also says to leave it on the wire rack to decorate it, but then I don't know how you're going to get it from there onto your cake stand. So I'm slightly improvising. I may regret it, but we will see. I've taken my chocolate ganache that I made earlier out of the fridge because we're using a hot one and a cold one for this cake. So I am going to carefully, how do you think I can slice into three? Shall I try or am I going to really regret it? Maybe let's, what am I going to do? I'm going to go for half. I'm going to go for half. It has actually sliced quite easily. So I'm going to put one half on here. Very carefully. In fact, uh, I think I'm just going to lift it, flip it, lift that off. I have got crumbs around the edge, but that's fine. We can tidy that up in a minute. I stir my chocolate and put my cream on to heat up. This cream is just coming to the boil and I'm gonna pour it into my chocolate. And let's just lift that carefully off the heat and just stir it in. The chocolate hadn't melted 100%, but actually when I make a chocolate ganache, I don't melt the chocolate completely. I let the hot cream melt it and I find I get a better smoother consistency and you see that's just coming together really well if you find it separates you can add a little bit of cold cream and stir it through well and that just rescues it i have learnt from previous uh um you know times of things going slightly wrong and that's how you can rescue split chocolate. Just add a little bit of cold cream and stir it through. I'm going to leave that off the heat now. Now I don't find this recipe very clear and I have read um, various versions of it which are all much for muchness. So this chocolate ganache that we made earlier and it has been uh, chilling all day in the fridge. I'm supposed to spread on here but it's not looking terribly spreadable at the moment. So I don't know whether I just need it to warm up. I don't know whether I just need to, it's, it's a bit like rock. So I'm slightly at a loss how <laughs> to spread that on my cake. However, the recipe does tell me you're to mix these two together and pour it over the top. So what I think I'm going to do, and I may regret this, is I'm going to put a little bit of this in here now. And hopefully it will soften it enough for me to be able to spread it. Because at the moment, um, there's absolutely no way that I could spread this. So let's um, see if I can just soften it up a bit <laughs> to look until we can get it as a spreadable thing. I love it when you can follow a recipe and it works. 
but um, this isn't the easiest to decipher. So I'm hoping that if I showed you how to do it, it might make it easier for you. I'm making a little bit of progress here. We are softening up to nearly a spreadable consistency. We're making progress. Okay. We are almost spreadable. Now I've got so much of this chocolate ganache and I've only got my two layers, but I'm slightly thinking that I might put a dollop underneath because we have got so much that I need to use it. I wish I could have cut that into three. Maybe I should have been braver, but I didn't want to risk it. I think <laughs> caution sometimes my middle name. So let's spread this out. I'm not sure if the Queen would approve of this version, but we've given it a go. But definitely softening it with a bit of the hot was a good call. I like a recipe that tells you exactly, exactly, exactly how to do things when it's quite complicated like this. Um, it tastes good. Right, let's put that down. And then we're going to spread a good dollop in between the two layers. It's actually spreading quite nicely now. I think I'm going to go quite generous because I don't think that is. Um, we've only got the two layers. Okie dokie. Now for this to go on the top. Like so. Now it says to mix the hot with the cold. So we've already done that a little bit and I know it works. Just sort of pour that in there. It says mix them thoroughly together. And then ladle. I'm not sure it's going to be soft enough to ladle, but we will see over the top of the cake. Yes, actually, it might be um, runny enough to ladle. I think it will be. We'll mix these well together. Right. They are well combined and I'm not going to ladle, but I am going to spoon it over the top. Now, the recipe says you want it to fall down the sides. I'm not just going to pour the whole bowl because I don't want to end up with a puddle of chocolate around the cake, which may happen. So I'm just going to carefully do it. I think the queen is a serious chocolate lover. Oh, it's a wonderful colour. Rich gorgeousness. And I'm hoping that it will just start trickling over the edges. So I'm slowly just adding more. And maybe that's why you want to have it on a wire rack and then lift it on. I just don't know how you'd lift it on um, without making a mess. So that is why I've done it this way. And then we're to leave this for a couple of hours before putting any decorations on. So you really might want to make the, the chocolate, um, the first chocolate ganache the night before. I'm just using a knife to just spread it around the sides. 
going to try and make the top look as smooth as possible. Right, I'm going to leave that to completely cool for a couple of hours before we decorate it. I have just tied it up around my cake with a knife and a tissue. Just made it look a little bit more presentable on the plate. It's been chilling in the fridge and I am going to use the remainder of this to decorate. And I've also got some strawberries. So I think, I don't know whether to put the strawberries on first or to pipe these. I think I'm gonna pipe these. So I'm just, this has been chilling in the fridge too but not for too long. So I'm hoping it's going to be pipeable. Let's push it down into that piping bag. I didn't want it to go to waste. So delicious. But this is the way I fill the piping bag. I'll show you in a second. You need an extra hand, really. Just Pull that up like so and squeeze it down into the nozzle and I've got a nozzle like that and then I'm just going to pipe little rosettes around the edge of my cake. Now apparently the Queen doesn't like to have a name on the cake, it just says happy birthday. There we have it. I could pipe all around the bottom, I think I will actually, and then it would just look a little bit tidier. There, we're done. I've got a chocolatey hand, let's wipe that. And then I think I am gonna put a few strawberries on the top too. A little strawberry flower. And then maybe one last squeeze of chocky in the middle. There, we have it, it is done. I am happy with that. I'm gonna put it in the fridge and let it chill completely before I serve it. And I need to wash up because you can't see it, but this kitchen looks like a bomb has hit it. <laughs> I really hope that you have enjoyed this week's video and me showing you how to make the Queen's favorite birthday cake. It looks utterly delicious and I know that we can't wait to try it. We shall sit down and enjoy it. Do you know what? I think it deserves a glass of champagne rather than a cup of tea. We shall see. But anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed it. Remember that next week's video is part two of this and it's coming out a day earlier than normal. It's coming out on Thursday rather than my normal day of Friday. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you're doing to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee and wishing you a really, really happy weekend and sending lots of love.